Hello friends, I am Dr. Anupama Goel. I am working as a lecturer or assistant professor in Biani College of Science and Management, Kalwar in the subject Botany. I welcome you all on behalf of Blue KPO. Today I will deliver my lecture on Anthocyros. Well my friends, as you all know, Anthocyros has 200 species. These species of Anthocyros are found in moist, shady places alongside the banks of the rivers and in the rock crevices. These are distributed in the temperate and tropical regions of the world. And now friends, I move towards the game to fight. The plant body of Anthocyros is gametophytic in nature and the thallus is torsiventral and prostrate. The thallus is suborbiculate in outline and is lobed. On the ventral surface of the thallus, as you see in the diagram, there are unicellular, thin walled, smooth rhizoids. Well, these tuberculate rhizoids and scales, as you see in the order, mark and shears are lacking in the anthocyros. Well, my dear friends, the dorsal surface of this thallus may be smooth as in Anthocyros lavis or it may be rough as in Anthocyros fusiformis. Now I move towards the BTS of the thallus or the internal structure of the thallus. The thallus consists of epidermis which is made up of smaller cells and thin wall cells. The cells of the thallus are parenchymatous and thin wall. Each cell contains many discoid or ovoid chloroplasts and in the center of the chloroplast there are many pyrenoids which is a peculiar feature of the order Anthocyrotopsida. Well friends, on the ventral surface of the thallus there are many mucilaginous cavities as is shown in the diagram and inside these mucilaginous cavities beside the alga nostoc which is a blue green alga this helps in fixing the nitrogen in the atmosphere but friends this is not a symbiotic association as the thallus of anthocyros grows well in the sterilized soil now i move towards the vegetative propagation in anthocyros it occurs by means of progressive death and decay of the thallus or by means of tubers. Now what are tubers? Tubers are the penetrating organs. They store the food material and during the unfavorable conditions these are formed and when the favorable conditions arrive the tubers detach from the parent plant to give rise to a new thallus. Now I move towards the JMA as you see in the diagram. These are the strong structure and the capsule structures formed on the dorsal surface of the thallus. These thallus these gene may also detach from the parent plant and give rise to a new thallus on the approach of favorable conditions. Now friends, I move towards the sexual reproduction in anthocyros. Well, most of the species of anthocyros are homothallic or monoecious. Some of the species are heterothallic or dioecious. The anthocyros species which are monoecious are cotendrous, means the anthidia matured earlier than the archegonia. Now friends, I move towards the development of the anthidium. Well, the development of the anthidium occurs by means of a superficial cell which is found on the dorsal surface of the thallus. This superficial cell divides periclinally to form an outer roof initial and anthidial initial. This inner anthidial initial undergoes two vertical divisions and triangles to each other to form four cells. And these four cells again divide transversely to form two tiers of four cells each. Now the cells of the lower tier they form the stalk and the cells of the upper tier they form the body of the anthidium. Now each cell of the upper tier again divide transversely to form the octet. Now each cell of the octet divides by a curved periclinal division at triangles to each other to form the eight primary jacket cells and the eight androgonial cells. These endogonial cells, they give rise to the endocyte mother cells and the endocyte mother cells undergo regular divisions to form the endocytes. Each of the endocyte metamorphoses into a bioplasiate anthozoid. Now friends, I come towards the development of the ugonium. Well, it develops from a superficial cell which is known as the archegonial initial. It divides transversely to form an outer primary archegonial initial and an inner primary stock cell. Now this primary archegonial 
epigonal initial as you see in the flow diagram divides by three intersecting periclinal divisions to form a central cell and the three jacket initial this central cell now undergoes a transverse division to form the lower daughter cell and the upper daughter cell the lower daughter cell is known as a primary daughter cell and the upper daughter cell again divides to form the upper cover initial and the lower primary neck canal cell the primary daughter cell now divides transversely to form the primary ventral canal cell and the egg now i am summing up my lecture by moving towards for ligation well the neck canal cells and the uh, ventral canal cell division rate and so a mucilaginous mound is formed at the tip of the archegonium and the freely swimming anthozoites are attracted towards the archegonia and now one of the anthozoites fuses with the egg to form the zygote now i am summing up my lecture by moving towards the sporophyte well the sporophyte consists of a capsule a meristematic seta and a bulbous foot the uh, for more details friends visit my website www.grukpo.com